Hello Toads and Toadettes, welcome to the final video in the Wii U collecting guide. This is going to be my full Wii U collection video, so all my consoles, all my special editions, or anything related to the Wii U games, you know it, all that good stuff. If you've not checked out my 3DS full collection video, I highly recommend checking that out as well, or any other Wii U collection guide videos. But you know what, just cut to the chase and let's just get right into it. First start of consoles, and the only one that I own is this black Wii U. I'm pretty sure this was like the Wii U Deluxe or something. I obviously have the console as well, I'm just not going to take it out my console stand. So I'm just going to show the gamepad. The one that I've always used, I really wanted the Wind Waker HD one, but never got to buy in that one. Works well still, it might be scratched up and kind of beat up, it still does me well, and it's a console that I like, and it's obviously way better than the white one, not just looks wise, because it just doesn't have that much gigabytes to the white one. We have nothing special on my Wii U, but that is the one that I have. Next, we're going to get to the special editions, and they're not really special editions, but first off, I have this Captain Toad Amiibo bundle thing that comes with this Captain... Actually, it's not Captain, but Toad Amiibo. Uh, it comes with the game, Big Box Amiibo. It's cool. I think I got this sealed for, like, 60 ish dollars. Not a bad price for a pretty good game, the special or amiibo bundle itself. Doesn't have an exclusive amiibo, it's just a normal toad, but it does look cool, so it, it, I'm glad to have it in my collection. Next, my favorite one out of these two amiibo bundles is my Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD amiibo bundle. It does come with an exclusive amiibo, well, that at least came out with the game. With a Wolf Link amiibo that gives you an exclusive dungeon, way cooler than Toad amiibo and Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Also comes with the game and this cool box, same basically layout as the other box, just you know, Twilight Princess related. My One of my favorite games of all time right now, by the way. Yes, Twilight Princess is amazing. Happy to own this one. This one was a pretty pricey one, and I don't want to say the price as I, uh, it, hurts. it hurts the wallet, you know. But yeah, happy to have this one in my collection as well. Next, we have my only actual special edition, which is Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Special Edition, an amazing game. And it's a pretty cool box. It does have its extras as well. I'm pretty sure I, it, it's inside right now. It's been a while since I opened this. Pretty sure it's like an art book or some kind of something. I, I can't even hear it inside. All I know, it was pretty worth it. I got this bad boy for like 40 bucks, which is like an amazing deal for a pretty good game. This is my favorite special edition of Wii U uh, because it's the only one I have. And yeah, I, it's pretty good as well. I Yeah, like I said, I got this for $40. The game is amazing and the special edition does look pretty cool on the shelf. Next, I'm just gonna breeze through these two. These are just big box or bundles for Super Mario Maker and Star Fox. These are not the cases, these are the bundles. This one came with a little book and this one just came with the bonus Star Fox card. Nothing special to these as they're basically the same price as their originals. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the games for the Wii U and I'm gonna be doing ordering this by franchise and then by chronological release of order. There may be some exceptions for spin-off series in certain franchises that are very different from the main franchise and I'll just put those at the end of those respective franchises and then their series in chronological order. You'll, you'll see when I get to this. It's really only one franchise that does this. And that franchise is the first one, Super Mario. And we are gonna be starting off with the first games released on this console for them. New Super Mario Bros. U. I have two copies of these. Ended up with them somehow. This one has New Super Luigi U. This one doesn't. Basically, this is just a better version because it includes the, uh, another game and a bonus video. I never got to watching that. Maybe I'm missing out. Uh, so I'm just going to be throwing this one aside for now and talk about this one because this is the cooler one. New Super Mario Bros. U was actually a very underrated game. I actually made my own video about it. It wasn't a review. But it was talking about how people praise the older 2D Mario games and tend to forget about this game. This is the best New Super Mario Bros. game, in my opinion. If we're going based off nostalgia, then no, it's New Super Mario Bros. DS. I thought that was a big part of my childhood. played that one a lot. But actually, objectively, or I guess it is a subjective matter, but in my opinion, this is the best one in terms of level, in terms of the content. You're basically getting two games, especially with the deluxe version. There's even more content in that version if you are looking for more and i honestly feel that this is up there with the other greatest 2d mario games and if you are looking to get this which i do recommend it's probably gonna cost you 10 ish dollars maybe 15 ish dollars if you're gonna get this version next we have super mario 3d world another classic i've talked about both of these games before on the channel super mario 3d world is basically just a sequel to 3d land with but more focused on multiplayer similarly from the jump to New Super Mario Bros. to New Super Mario Bros. Wii. 
the levels are more multiplayer based and there is also more variety and i just feel like it's an overall better game especially if you get the bowser's fury version where it comes with two games an amazing 3d mario game that i highly recommend especially if you have people to play with it's a lot of family fun if you're looking to get this game it's probably gonna cost you ten dollars next we're gonna be moving on to this abomination of a game mario at mario and sonic at the olympic games Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games, Sochi 2014. I never liked Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. This is the only one that I have on Wii U because Rio 2016 is $100. It's not that good. It gets boring after a while. Well, some of the music is cool. The sports are just not so fleshed out and really just feel filler. And there's not much to fun to have in this game. I would not recommend it. But if you are for some reason looking to buy it, it's probably going to cost you $18. Next, we have another game I've widely talked about on the channel. Mario Kart. 8, not to Deluxe, just Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has so much more content, including the DLC on Switch. And this game's DLC for free. Uh, if you have a Switch, don't get this, just get a Deluxe. But if you only have a Wii U, then I do recommend getting this. And it's a pretty good game, and it does have online service still. I don't know how much people are playing it. But it does still have an online service. It was an amazing game at the time, and while there is now an improved, way more improved version of the game. Especially the battle mode. <laughs> this is still viable if you only have a Wii U. If you are looking to get it then it's probably going to cost you twelve dollars next we're going to go to mario party 10 i can't remember if i put this on my don't buys or on my underrated games list yeah mario party 10 is a pretty controversial game after mario party 9 nd cube needed to prove themselves that they could make a good mario party game and instead they just followed in the same footsteps as mario party 9 but in added this bull crap bowser mode the mini games are as good as ever though. ND Cube knows how to make good Mario Party mini games, just not a good Mario Party game. They've been working on it though, I have faith in them. But this game is just not really it. If only I'd only recommend getting this if you are a huge Mario fan or maybe a huge Mario Party fan. There's some enjoyment to be had here. I did play it for a while when it came out. And if you are looking to get it, it's probably gonna cost you can't really remember, but I think it was somewhere around twenty to thirty dollars. Next we have Super Mario Maker, one of my favorite games of all time. It sucks, though. All right, now, don't get me wrong. Those two sentences might be very contrary. It sucks right now. When it came out, it was amazing. But right now, the online service is shut down, so there's no reason to really pick this up. Just get Super Mario Maker 2. What a better game that one is. And it still has online service. There's no reason to pick this one up. When it was out, it was an amazing game. But now there's no online service, I do not recommend getting this. Get Super Mario Maker 2. But when it was out, there was so much creativity that could be had with this game. And it was so much fun. If you are looking to get this for some reason... So don't recommend it since it doesn't have online service. It's probably going to cost you like $6. Next, we have uh, okay. uh, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Um, yeah, goodbye. Next, I'll give this game a chance. Unlike Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, Paper Mario Color Splash. That's right, you heard those rhymes. It's insane bars. It is an improvement from Sticker Star. I feel like the humor and the writing is better. The battle system is a little worse. I feel like the levels are better as well. The graphics are obviously improved, and I like Huey way more. Paper Mario Color Splash is still not one of the best Paper Mario games, in my opinion, it's probably the second worst one. But I still did find some enjoyment out of it. If you didn't like Sticker Star, then I don't recommend getting it. I really only recommend this if you are a huge Paper Mario fan. I did find enjoyment out of it, but I know it's not one of the best games. If you are looking to get this game, though, it's probably going to cost you... Man, I don't know if it's an expensive game or if it's a cheap game. I have not checked this in a while, but if it is expensive, I remember it for some reason being $60. But if it's not, it's probably like a 20 ish dollar game. Next, we're going to get to those series that, are ta that I was talking about earlier. And the first one is Yoshi's Holy World. What an amazing game. Hasn't been ported to Switch, so it still has value. Yes, it's in 3DS, but these versions are interchangeable. Yoshi's Holy World had so much charm into it. The art style was amazing. Having all those amiibo costumes was also so much fun. But it was still easy. It was still an enjoyable Yoshi experience. And overall, it was very fun. The 3DS version does have more content, but this does look better. So I do highly recommend getting this. It's probably going to cost you $12. And lastly, for the Mario franchise, is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, still sealed. Ooh, flex, I know. I was talking about this one earlier. It's a pretty cool game. It's a unique spinoff for Mario, having something new. It's a new spinoff series, like I said. And it was pretty interesting to have another puzzle series, and it was actually very fun. And I know I am saying it was a lot, because they haven't really talked about Captain Toad in a while. I think it was a very unique game, and if you're into puzzle games or just Mario in general, I do recommend 
playing this. Oh, and that's what the totem evil did. It, you could play hide and seek. How interesting. How fun. How delightful. If you're looking at this game, which I do recommend, it's probably going to cost you $15. We're done with Mario. It wasn't as long as the 3DS's Mario, but it's fine because we're moving on to Pokemon, which is only actually one game long with Pokemon Tournament. Pokemon Tournament DX on Switch is better, but it's fine. At least we have a Pokemon game on Wii U. Obviously, mainline games have always been on handhelds up until the Switch since there wasn't a handheld in that generation. It's hybrid. So, it's just gonna be a spin-off, and that's what it was. It actually wasn't that bad, I'm not gonna lie. Fighting as Pokemon was pretty fun, and uh, there's, there's, I don't think Incineroar is in this game, though, so it's pretty sad. But it's fine, as this game has online support, and it is very fun. If you do have a Switch, they'll get Pokemon Tournament DX instead, but if you're looking at the game, it's actually probably gonna cost you $8, so it's, if you wanna get a cheap version, maybe check out this one. Next, we're going to move on to The Legend of Zelda, which has three amazing, well, two amazing games. And we're going to be starting that off with The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD. One of my favorite games of all time. The art style, do not let it distract you. I actually personally like the art style. The game itself has very deep meanings, especially the final boss. Ganon's monologue is actually insane. And I love this game to death. It was actually my first 3D Zelda that I played through fully and beat. And, do man, do I not regret it. The game looks amazing in HD. I just want to say that runs in 60 frames, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, from Nintendo game, 60 frames is pretty good. And having your map and all your items in the bottom screen of the Wii U gamepad was also pretty efficient. There was Miiverse, but yeah, Miiverse is, uh, is dead. But overall, the adventure of Wind Waker had a plethora of dungeons that were all wonderfully crafted. Loved the story, and the Triforce Shard Quest is way easier and shorter than this version. I highly recommend checking this game out. If you are going to try to get it, it's probably going to cost you, I want to say, 20 ish dollars. Next, we have Hyrule Warriors, which I played Hyrule Warriors Legends on 3DS, and I didn't enjoy the game. Well, it did crash a lot. This version is not crashed and it looks better, but I'm pretty sure you can't switch between characters on the battlefield, which must have sucked, especially for the final boss. That was probably horrible. If that is true, I don't really recommend this game. I haven't actually played this as I just played the Legends version. But at least this version doesn't crash because 3DS <laughs> cannot handle this game. It actually was pretty addicting though for a game. I know it's 100%. It's very long though, which is kind of annoying. But overall, the game was pretty fun on 3DS at least. And if you are a Zelda fan, that's the only way I would really recommend this game. It's probably going to cost you $12. And lastly for the Zelda franchise, we have... The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. One of my current favorite Zeldas. I don't want to say my current favorite Zelda yet because Tears of the Kingdom is coming out. But man, was this game's story so good. The dungeons, just so much dungeons, and most of them are all quality before, besides for the last two, a little bit short. But that was because they were trying to wrap up the game, so I totally understand it. But yes, the storytelling and the new characters was just amazing. I loved going to the Twilight areas and eventually the Twilight Realm. Music is also amazing, and the art style is not that edgy. People just use it as a complaint to rag on this game, but this game is actually one of the best Zelda games. And yeah, with the new Wolf Link Amiibo and the new graphics and Twilight Princess HD, just made it even more better. Same thing with the gamepad being the map and the item screen. What a fantastic game that I highly recommend. If you're looking at this game, though, it is pretty expensive. I think it's $80, so um, have fun. Next, we have Donkey Kong with only one game on Wii U. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Very amazing game. It was ported to Switch with the new Funky Mode. That's right, Funky Mode on Switch. Watch out for that. But yeah, it's still viable on Wii U if you only have a Wii U or if you just want to save money because this version is way cheaper. It's classic Donkey Kong fun, but with a very modern twist on it. It has to be, my, in my opinion, the best Donkey Kong game. It took what made Donkey Kong Country Returns good and Donkey Kong Country good, and basically just mixing in two while having a Arctic kind of theme. The multiplayer was also good, and not having to shake the crap out of the Wii Remote was honestly just a blessing. If you're looking at this game, it's probably going to cost you $12. Next, we have the pink puffball Kirby with Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. I said it on last video, wait until you see what game I started Kirby with. Oh, and how are you surprised? Yeah, it was Kirby and the Rainbow Curse back in 2015. I was like, you know what? It's time that I give him a chance. And man, did I pick the wrong game to start Kirby out with. It's all good. Robobot clutched it next year. It's all good. It's all good. 
Kirby and the Rainbow Paradox actually wasn't that bad. It's not the best game, and it probably wasn't the best game for me to start out with, being honest. But it was a cool twist on the Kirby series. The only thing is that they already did this before with Kirby Canvas Curse, and this is basically a sequel to Kirby Canvas Curse, or Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. It's all right, and it was pretty fun. If I don't really recommend this if you played either Canvas Curse and enjoyed it, or if you're a really big fan of Kirby, because it can get pretty annoying at some But the transformations were a cool twist. And I'm pretty sure this version actually had bosses. Or that might have been vice versa. I don't know. One of the games in these, of these two did not have bosses. But yeah, it wasn't that bad. If you are looking at this game, it's probably going to cost you like 30 ish dollars. Next, we're going to be moving on to Fire Emblem with Tokyo Mirage Sessions. It's a crossover. It's not completely Fire Emblem. But, I mean, what does the sharp FE stand for? Come on. With Tokyo Mirage Sessions, it's such an amazing game for its length. I think it's one of the longest Wii U games. I'm pretty sure takes a very long time to beat from what I remember. Well, it's up there with Breath of the Wild if you really want to call it, if you don't know, speed run and beat in five minutes. But yeah, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, the big part of this game for me was the combat. I really liked the combat and the length of the game makes it so worth it for the money. And it's honestly not one of the best Fire Emblem games. I don't even really think this is mainline. This is a spinoff. But they went pretty big on this game. Sadly, it is overlooked because it was in the dying year of the Wii U 2016. Oh, not a good time. But yeah, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, I do recommend this game. If you are going to get it, it's probably going to cost you $15, $18, one of those. Next, we have Splatoon with Splatoon. Wow, 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 wow. I know, it's surprising. Splatoon is such an amazing game that's only on Wii U and still has online service working. People still play Splatoon 1. And it's still a good game. It has exclusive special abilities, exclusive maps, and other exclusive content like the story mode. Still highly recommend checking this out. Get this game. Do not sleep on it just because Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 3 are on Switch. This has a lot of exclusive content that they not bring to both of those games. So it's still worth playing. And yeah, basically everything I just said there summed it up perfectly. If you're looking at this game, it's probably going to cost you $12 or $10. Speeding this up a little bit, we have Super Smash Bros with Super Smash Bros for Wii U. Basically the same thing that I was saying with 3DS, but just better because this is just a better version. Just better. You do everything on 3DS besides some of the modes, but and just better graphics and better performance. Yes, and I think this game did come out later though, so that's the only downside. But it's basically the same thing. Good Smash fun, but if you have a Switch, just get Smash Ultimate in my opinion. Some of the modes were all right. I think this is the one that had the weird mode that I didn't like, but the kind of like party-ish stuff. I don't remember the name. It was okay, and if you're just looking to go to the, you know, meat of Smash, it is pretty decent, and I would recommend it if you had a Wii U. If you're arguing this game, it's probably going to cost you $12. Next, we have Star Fox, and we're going to be starting off, yes, two Star Fox games, that's right, with Star Fox Zero. Star Fox Zero was such a good game, but it was ruined by one thing, Miyamoto, you were so... Close to saving the Star Fox franchise, the controls. It honestly could have been up there with Star Fox 64, but the controls kind of killed it. They could have done, they could have had these controls and just added button controls, but they didn't. They didn't want to. And uh, sucks, sucks, man, because this game was actually pretty good. Just the controls makes everyone just, you know, just hate on it. But the story was pretty good, and the maps also were not that bad, just like I said. This game is actually a good Star Fox game. It's just the controls kind of killed it. If you're looking at this game, it's probably going to cost you $10. Next, we have Star Fox Gar, which I've actually not played. I know it's a spinoff, and I think it's some kind of tower defense. One of the only tower defense uh, Nintendo games. If it's not tower defense, then I look stupid, and I'm just going to move on. If you want to get this game, it's probably going to cost you like $5. Next, we're moving on to Pikmin with the only game on Wii U, Pikmin 3. Wow, man, I can even put this game down and be here for a while. Pikmin 3 is so good. Obviously, Pikmin 3 Deluxe is better on Switch. And if you're going to get that, just get that. Or say for Pikmin 4. Pikmin 4 hype. Let's go. Okay. Moving on. Pikmin 3. Wow. Pikmin 3. This was the first game that actually got me into Pikmin. And I have adored the series since. It's one of my favorite Nintendo franchises. I don't think it's the best one. But it's the one that hits closest to home, in my opinion. Pikmin. You work together with your Pikmin in 3. The graphics are amazing. The bosses are amazing. It returns back to its roots in some way with the juice mechanic and all that and having limited time and limited resources rather than going in caves. But it's all good because the story is nice. The characters are expressive and the new pigment types are dope. And environments are nice. Everything is good about this game. The bingo battle as well. This game, which I, I do really, 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 really recommend. It's probably going to cost you $10. 
Next, we're going to be moving on to just miscellaneous games that don't really have a respective franchise. And we're going to be starting that off with the Pac-In Game of the Wii U, Nintendo Land. Yes, Nintendo Land is actually a good game. It is good. Its theme is good. The games are good, especially the Pikmin and Zelda and Luigi's Mansion and Mario Ch They're all good. Oh, the Metroid one. Metroid Blast, yes, that was amazing. But yes, all the games are good. I have not tried Octopus Dance, though I'll be honest there. Nintendo Land has such good replayability with friends. If you have friends, get this game. It's super cheap, and it's overlooked by many. Such a good celebration of Nintendo. I wish the Switch had something like this. This is one of the games that really makes the Wii U stand out, in my opinion. If you're looking at this game, though, it's probably going to cost you like $5. Next, we have a game that is kind of in a franchise. We really want to consider it. NES Remix Pack. I guess you could say the NES Remix franchise. NES Remix Pack basically just has NES Remix 1 and NES Remix 2. And just combines them. I don't think really added that much besides, like, the original Super Mario Bros. But reversed and starring Luigi. And some competing in world championship stuff. But yeah, I basically just took both games. And on 3DS, there's Ultimate NES Remix, which took the, the best from each game which is the version I played, but this basically just has all of it. If you just want the full package, go ahead and get this one. The game was really fun, though, and I do recommend it if you want to celebrate Nintendo's culture, just like the last game. If you're looking to get this game, it's probably going to cost you $20. And lastly in my Wii U collection is the infamous Wii Party U. Actually, a pretty decent game, I'm not going to lie. I have been playing this as of late, and it is not horrible. I will say that. I put it in my underrated games, and I stand by it. While the CPU can be funny sometimes, and the overall charm of the game can be pretty goofy, I think there is stuff to be had. I think there is fun to be had, like genuine fun. Especially like Island Party, when we run the islands, very fun. Some of the minigames are actually not that bad either. Some of them are very, very corny, I cannot lie. They are pretty funny, and pretty fun if you have some people to play with. And if you're looking for a good party game, I actually think this is better than Mario Party 10, and I would say this is the, one of the first Nintendo consoles that's best party game, first party at least, is not Mario Party. It's Wii Party U. So yeah, go get this game if you are looking for a good party game. If you are, it's probably going to cost you $60 though. Yes, it's a pretty pricey game, sadly. And there you have it, my toads and toads. This is my Wii U collection. If you guys enjoyed this video, I do have other Wii U collecting guide videos that go more in depth to the must-buys, the don't-buys, the underrated games, all that good stuff. And I also do have a 3DS collecting guide series where I did do a 3DS full collection video, which is way longer because I have a 3DS bias. But the Wii U is still one of my childhood consoles, which is pretty weird to say. It's getting, it's becoming retro soon. 15 years seems to be the general consensus. It's coming soon, people. Do not sleep on it. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please consider liking and hitting that subscribe button. And I do have other Nintendo-related content on my channel as well. And on that note, guys, I'll see you in the next one.